Hi, this is Micah, otherwise known as Attic Pictures. I'm making this video to celebrate my 100 subscribers, which I realize is not a huge number of subscribers, but I feel like my subscribers are loyal, and so I feel like it's something to celebrate. Um, I feel like the bulk of my subscribers are Pogo fans, so I'll probably focus a little bit more on those, but I, I feel like I do have a lot of fans of my Disney crossover trailers as well, so I'll talk about that a little bit too. Let's see, I'm not really sure where to start here. Let's start with, we'll go, go through my playlists really quick. I'll start with Disney Christmas music videos. Those um, I've been making every year the past three years, and they're actually three of my most viewed videos. They're kind of just fun to make and throw together, and I like that it's a, a good video to go with a good song. I hate looking for a song on YouTube and coming across some horrible slideshow video or, you know, a, another fan video of something that doesn't have anything to do with the subject of the song or the feel of the song, like, you know, a Twilight video with a Christmas song or what have you. So those are kind of fun just to put out every year. Uh, next playlist I have here, Disney Park Satire. It is her birthday. Happy birthday. Miscellaneous. These are sort of videos that I'm not sure where to put, but I didn't want them to be left out by not being in any playlist at all. I didn't want them to get lost in the shuffle. Fantasia Yawns, something I just threw together really fast because I had heard that Fantasia is very sleep inducing because of how many yawns it has in it. So I figured that somebody might have already done this, so I looked it up on YouTube. So then once I saw that nobody had done it, it I was like, well, I might as well do this really quick. So yeah, lots of yawns. <laughs> Um, making the old hag real. I was inspired by a user named Pixaloo who made a realistic interpretation of Jessica Rabbit, which I found very fascinating. I figured why not give a shot at it. I enjoy um, Photoshop and obviously not to the extent that he knows how to use it, but I figured I would do my best and what the heck. Uh, silent film version of Nightmare Before Christmas. Well really the description of this video says everything. Um, I found the characters, find the characters very expressive and the, the whole movie obviously has a very moody, dark feel to it that I thought would be perfect for a silent film, and so that's what I did. I tried to keep that short as well, but I, I think I, a lot of people get bored watching a movie that they've already seen only without the dialogue. But anyways, I'm still proud of it. Disney song mashups. Um, really, I wish that I made more of these. The com I don't, they don't get a ton of views, but the comments that I get on them are pretty positive, so it encourages me to make more. Um, but it's just a very complicated task of finding a, a song that I want to cover, and then finding a Disney song that would go well with that, and then getting the lyrics right, and then getting my vocals right. Not to mention if it's a song like like Blue Eyes that has lots of backing vocals uh, because typically karaoke songs will have the backing vocals in them already which presents a problem to me because I, those aren't the right lyrics that I want to use. But anyways, yeah, lots of work but I wish I, I made more. Head and kiss her, go on and kiss her, kiss her, kiss the girl, girl, kiss her, kiss her. Kiss the girl, girl, too shy. All right, so Disney trailers with a spin. The first one of these that I did was Winnie the Pooh slash Where the Wild Things Are. And as far as I can remember, I don't think that I knew this whole Disney trailer mashup thing was a, like a thing on YouTube. I, I think that I thought I had an original idea here. Um, but I just realized one day at work the similarities between... Winnie the Pooh and Where the Wild Things Are. I, I actually hadn't seen Where the Wild Things Are yet. I had I'd never read the book or anything. But the trailers were in heavy rotation, and so I had seen a lot about Where the Wild Things Are. And so then I was realizing that there's a lot of similarities with Winnie the Pooh, with you know a young boy sort of escaping into imaginary world with imaginary creatures that showcased different specific personalities. So. I was trying to think of a way that I could showcase those similar similarities, so I referenced the trailer, which then I was like, well, why don't I just use the trailer? So that's what I did. And that's actually my most popular uh, trailer. I mean, I don't know if it's because it's the oldest one, but it's certainly very popular, which I, 
I really like how it turned out, but it's not my favorite because there's not a lot of lip syncing involved, and those are the ones that I'm more proud of, like, say, um, The Help slash Princess and the Frog, which has hardly any views thanks to a very generic title. I'm gonna help with your stories. We all are. And then there's The Tempest, which is a little bit different because it's it's not based on an actual version of The Tempest movie. I created my own version and used clips from Disney, so I'm actually pretty proud of that one too. Uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It makes me want to see a Disney version of The Tempest all the more. So, on to my Pogo playlist. Doing these Pogo videos actually spawned from doing my trailer videos. Watching Skynet Symphonic, I noticed the similarities between Terminator 2 and Treasure Planet, so I had the idea to do a trailer mashup of those two movies. I don't remember, but I guess watching the, the trailer I must have been uninspired because I didn't go through with that. So then I sort of came back to Skynet Symphonic and thought, well, what if I used the Treasure Planet clips to showcase the similarities that way? That's what I ended up doing, and then that all spun out of control from there, and here I am, eight Pogo videos later. I don't want anyone to think that I make these videos because I somehow find the original Pogo videos to be inferior or not well done or something. I, they're simply a creative means of me showing them in a different light or in a different way. Um, and oftentimes, it's made me fall in love with a song that I didn't necessarily love before, and so I can only hope that it might have that effect on other people, too. So, I was very proud of Murmurs of Prydain, the second one I did, because Pogo favorited it and commented on it, and that got me a wealth of views, which I think it's really impressive the amount of influence that Pogo has without even realizing it, I'm sure. And then there was the Mellow Brick Road competition, which was kind of a disappointment because I didn't even make the top five, but not a disappointment in that I'm happy with the video. So I spent a few weeks on that one. That was the first one that I wasn't copying something that Pogo had already done. As in with, with Spaceport and Pridain, I I was copying cut for cut the editing decisions that Pogo had made, and I still do videos that way. For example, if, let's say, in, in Murmurs of Middle Earth, there's a shot of a mountain with something on fire, so then I use a shot from the Black Cauldron with the Horned King's castle on fire and exploding. Trying to copy exactly everything. Um, so with Mellowbrick Road, I was creating something completely original from scratch, so it took me quite a while, and anyways, I, I'm happy with how it turned out, so. The Pinocchio AI mashup. I'm sure I knew at some point that AI was a futuristic retelling of Pinocchio, but apparently I, I'd completely forgotten. I saw the movie back when it was new and don't remember thinking much of it, and certainly didn't remember that it was Pinocchio. Uh, in retrospect, I had to have read it on his on Pogo's blog when, when he first posted the video, but anyway, somehow I thought my idea of doing it with Pinocchio was completely original. It wasn't until I, I got about a third of the way through editing where I realized that it wasn't a coincidence, um, all these character similarities. Since then, I've rewatched AI, and it's probably one of my favorite movies. Is 50 years a long time? Come here, Tiger. Come here, Shorty. Ant Island. That one, I thought I had a very clever idea of combining garden with a bug's life, because they're both outdoors, have that very bright, sunshiny, green and dirt sort of feel and look to it. Once I started editing, I realized that it was going to be much more difficult than I expected, because most of the garden video is close-ups of plants and shovels and dirt, and there's not, there's actually not a lot of that in A Bug's Life without a character in it. I think in my mind I had the scenes from the end credits of A Bug's Life, and then once I realized those were only in the credits, framed with, you know, credits, and black, that those were unusable for me. So it was a bit of a challenge. I'm happy with the results. I feel like it could have been better, but not with A Bug's Life. So it's as good as it's going to get, I think. Plus it's a little frustrating because the audio is out of sync once it uploaded to YouTube, and I didn't notice and until I felt like it was too late and what was the point of deleting it and re-uploading it. And the same with Panoran too, which I'm glad it's had a positive response because 
it's also a hair of a second off. It's a little bit off, it drives me crazy. Reaching Respite. So I, I, I've done all these videos for holidays. I have my Christmas songs every Christmas, each Christmas, and then I did the, night, the Silent Nightmare Before Christmas for Halloween, and then I did my Disney Prince medley song mashup for Valentine's Day. So I wanted to put something out there for St. Patrick's Day. My obvious inclination was Darby O'Gill and the Little People. I originally had thought of it when I was working on Mellow Brick Road and Pogo released the Mellow Brick Road, I believe it's called Blue Mix. Once I listened to the Blue Mix, it really just didn't match well with Darby O'Gill. It just didn't feel like it came from that source. So I went to my iTunes and sort of was clicking through all my Pogo songs, which most likely all of his songs, um, and came across Reaching Respite, which is this short and sweet little number. Not sure where the sources are from. I, I couldn't find any information online or anything from Pogo about where that song comes from. My guess is it probably comes from a few different sources. But anyway, so I I thought it sounded like a, a good fit for Darby O'Gill and would be a nice short little happy St. Patrick's Day greeting. And now the act you've all been waiting for. Um, then Living Passamaquoddy. So, oh, well actually Reaching Respite was the only other video that I, I did um, that wasn't copying Pogo's editing. So that was another original one that wasn't quite so hard because it's such a short song. But next I did Living Passamaquoddy with Pete's Dragon and, and Pogo's Living Island from HR Puff and stuff. So that was another originally edited video and boy was it a pain. I I spent probably a good month on it. Granted, half of that month was probably procrastinating and not working on it at all and just having it in the back of my mind, but it felt like a, m a month's worth of work. <laughs> so I thought I'd take a minute just to explain some of the technical side of things, what programs I use. Predominantly I use iMovie, a little bit of Adobe Premiere Pro, though I don't really like to because it slows my computer way down, and some GarageBand if I need some sound editing stuff like for The Tempest. Um, but yeah, mostly iMovie. I'd love to get my hands on something like After Effects that I could really sink my teeth into and do some, some more interesting editing. I thank each and every one of you for coming back and watching what I have to offer and most of the views from Living Past Maquati. Not that that's a lot of views, but most of them are subscribers. So thank you guys, and I hope to see you in the future. Okay, I can't.